Hello, Algebra Topics. What you need to do today, April 16th, is go to Schoology and go into April 16th and download today's assignment and put that into Notability. And once you have it loaded into Notability, I like to keep my folders separate. Click on Algebra Topics or ELMath and click Open Today's Assignment. Okay, we are gonna start by going over the four rules that we have already done. Just like always, at the top of our paper, it says that this is for students to do. So I actually want you to solve the problem that is there and then hand write the rule. So you're going to solve this problem and then write the rule here. So I will start the rule, so if you are multiplying and the bases are the same, then you add the exponents. Okay, so you'll need to do these four problems and write the rule for each of those. You may then scroll to the second page. So on the top, Mr. Peterson and I like to say whether it is a student or a teacher page, and this is for both. This is the rule that we introduced yesterday. So it's our fifth rule for exponents, and it's new from yesterday's assignment. So if you have parentheses, like here, with an exponent on the outside, then you are going to multiply the exponents. These we will do together. So our expression is a to the raised to the second power to the sixth power. So what does that mean? Okay, so that means everything that's inside the parentheses, we have it six times. So we're going to write a squared times a squared times a squared times a squared times a squared. One, two, three, four, five. See, not even enough times a squared. This is what this means. That we have the exponent on the outside tells us how many times we have the things that are on the inside. So how many a's do we have all together? So if we remember this a squared means we have a times a. Okay, so every time we have that a squared, we really have two. So we could count by two. So we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So our answer for our simplified is a to the 12th. Now, I want you to think about how did we come up with a to the 12th by looking at the main problem. We have 2 and a 6. How did we get 12 from 2 and 6? Oh, just like the directions say, we multiplied. So you are able to take the exponent inside the parentheses and the exponent outside the parentheses and multiply it. So 2 times 6 is 12. And that's what we got over here for our answer. Okay, let's try the next one. x squared y to the third parentheses squared. So let's write it out in the meaning form. So this is telling me I have two of this. So I'm going to write x squared y to the third, and I have two of them, so I'm going to do times x squared y to the third. So I want you to think, we know we are going to have an x and a y. How many x's do I have? Well, I have two here and two here, so I have four all together. Then for the y's, I have three here and three here. I have six all together. That's if we do it the old way. Let's go back and check our new rule is if we have parentheses with an exponent outside, then you may multiply the exponents. This 2 times 2 will give us 4, and that's exactly what we got. This 2 times 3 give us 6, and that's what we got. Woohoo! So if you follow the rule, it should make it easier to do the assignment. Okay, two more practice ones. Okay, 
So we have 4 of m to the 4th n. So I'm going to write m to the 4th n times m to the 4th n times m to the 4th n times m to the 4th n. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4 of those. I got that from here. Whoops, I just accidentally erased an m. Okay, now remember that this means m times m times m times m. If I did that every time, one, I'm going to have a lot of m's. Okay, let's try it the multiplication way. You can do the exponent on the outside and multiply it with the exponent on the inside. So really, that's 4 times 4, which equals 16. And guess what? I have 16 m's. So my answer is going to be m to the 16th. I can do the same thing with the n's. The exponent is 1, so I'm only going to have 1 times 4. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's going to be n to the 4th. Okay, if we look at the last one, Oh, I'm going to need you to remember what happens or the rule for anything raised to the power of zero. Okay, so basically this is saying, hey, I don't have any of them. Okay, to write out, so I have to think what this is going to mean. This is going to be x to the zero, y, and then I'm going to need to do this. What's four times zero? Four times zero is zero. So I'm going to put here. Well, what is our rule? Anything raised to the power of 0 equals 1. So re this becomes 1, and this becomes 1. So it's 1 times 1 is 1. On our next page, this page specifically says it's for students. So you are going to try to do these problems. And then on the last page, it is also a student page. And this is reviewing all five of the rules with some numbers and some variables. So going back way from a couple weeks ago when we did use numbers, and then you may need to get your calculator out for problems like number one or number five and so on. Okay, if you're watching this video and you haven't turned off yet, the cool thing is I put some of the answers there, but guess what? To get the credit, you're going to need to show some work and fill in your answers. One of, they get kind of hard from here down is where they get kind of more difficult. So they are for try. Try those, please. Perfect. Great, guys. If you have any questions, like always, you can contact Mr. Peterson or me, Mrs. Cavalli, using Schoology. Thanks. Have a great day. See you hopefully soon in class.